Today we're going to talk about the heart, and the reason we're talking about the heart is we're talking about this book called Living Untethered, and the book is largely about an idea, an experience we want to have as, as awakening beings, which is to be free, and to be in a state of happiness and joy without it having to be manufactured or caused by something in, in the outer world. There are basically three things that's going on inside of you. One is the information you're taking in by your senses. As you take it in through your senses, the mind records it. And if it can, um, it, then it just flows on through you. The second one is your, are your thoughts, the thoughts that you are, are generating constantly out of the mind. And the mind is just thinking. And many of us believe that our thoughts are who we are. But it turns out that what we're doing in this practice, this understanding that we're headed toward, we're becoming clearer about the idea that neither the thoughts, the emotions, nor the sensations we get in through the eyes and ears and nose and mouth, those are not us. We are the witness state. And the third thing is our emotions. And emotions are generated from the heart, which is why we're talking about the heart so much today. To Singer, Singer is the, says that the heart is an extremely sensitive instrument. It's an instrument that makes the experience have some vitality, some juice to it. And it brings, and it does that by giving us feelings or emotions. And those feelings or emotions change quickly as the situation and the, as the heart feels it. And these emotions are the music of our life. So what is it about the field of dreams when you see that, that field that you get this emotion about it? I mean, it's just a picture of a baseball field in front of a corn rose. And he goes, it's the music. And I said, no, no, what is it really? And he goes, no, that's, it's just the music. I said, I don't, I don't think so. Well, I'm telling the head of a studio, <laughs> which illustrates two points at this point. One <clears throat> is that we live with our limited knowledge and we think we know something, don't we? And so as a wise man once said, never argue. Because you don't know enough to know if you know what you really need to know to be right. So don't argue. Just imagine seeing Romeo and Juliet and you loved it. It was technically good, but it didn't touch you emotionally. So what? You wouldn't go again, right? But the way life is, is that we, we love having a full and rich life, and you can't have it without emotions. So the question then is, how does one live in such a way to make the most of these emotions without ruining the game? Inappropriate responses to the new data that's coming in is because we filter it through our emotional baggage. And if we haven't released that baggage, we do oddball things. We say things, they blurt out, you know, as someone says, when you said that, I think your, your, your Fortean slip was showing. But this experience of emotion can be so intense that we shut it down, and when you shut it down, what it does is it coalesces into a knot, essentially, an energetic knot that prevents the flow of energy through your heart that can be expressed as human love or can transcend to a higher state of, of divine love, of unconditional love. You know, to be able to recognize, to stay in a place of consciousness that recognizes you have thoughts and feelings, but you're not them. You have them, you're not them. It's tricky because we are usually very much identified with either our thoughts or our feelings or both 
as being us. And it has become, in shorthand, who we are. That's the purpose of the work we're doing, which is to let life be transcendent to go from having an ordinary life in which we try to make the world according to our preferences, where we are force-feeding all of existence down the tight channel toward our preconceived ideas of what would make us happy. Have you ever gotten the thing you really wanted and then went, oh, well, that, that wasn't it either, right? And so, what Singer is saying is that if you begin to live, not from forcing the world into your preferences, but clearing up the packets of energy that block the flow of Shakti or Chi or life, flow through you, if you work on clearing those instead of trying to manipulate the world, at some point it will happen that you are naturally, consistently happy, joyful. I hope you got something out of today's service. We intend to bring you things that will help you in your life become more of who you want to be, give you the freedom of forgiveness and the hope of expectancy that your life will unfold in a way that brings you joy, happiness, and is a contribution to the world. If you would like to contribute to this ministry, please go to unitytriangle.org, hit the donate button, and it will lead you into an easy way of doing that. We thank you for your attention and look forward to seeing you again here.